Hey guys, hello and welcome to Navid for Speed. This is the Cupra Fomento. It currently sits between the Cupra Leon and the Cupra Ateca in the Cupra range. It's the first vehicle that Cupra have built from the ground up. I'm excited to drive it. It seems like a very desirable and popular vehicle. So let's go take a look around it. The Cupra Fomento. Cupra's first exclusive vehicle. The Fomento is named after a region on the Spanish island of Mallorca. It comes with a number of petrol and hybrid options. This 2 litre 310 horsepower petrol version does 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 4.9 seconds and keeps going up to 155 miles per hour. This top spec VZ3 version starts at around 45 and a half thousand pounds with an added 1900 pounds for the petrol blue matte paint and another 415 pounds for a Beats audio system. Right, so inside the Cupra Fomento, it's very familiar if you've been in Cupras before. Of course, I made a video on the Cupra Born not so long ago, which you can see by clicking this pop-out link at the top. Go check out that video about the Cupra Born, it's pretty cool. But the interior of the Cupra Fomento is actually very similar. You get loads of this copper trim everywhere, including the Cupra logo, which does look very cool. You also get uh, loads of plastic and leather material. You get gold, uh, bronze stitching in the steering wheel and in the dashboard. You get this 12 inch infotainment screen, which uh, is very, it takes a bit of getting used to when you first use it, but eventually when you get used to it, it's pretty easy to use, apart from these climate control buttons, which can be a bit fiddly. In front of you, you get a digital dash screen, which you can not only change what's on the dials, but you can also change what the entire screen shows. So you can choose sat nav or you can choose some driving data. In the center console, you get your drive selector mode in the center console, which like in the Cupra Born, it was on the side. I prefer it to be here in the center console and you've got spaces to put your phone and you've got wireless charging as well. The seats, they seem pretty, pretty supportive, pretty comfortable. It seems like a great driving position. Um, I mean, you've got plenty of space for adults in the back as well. Uh, obviously, with this being the Formentor, it does have a bit of a coupe shape at the back. So it's not like the Ateca where you get plenty of headroom in the back, but it can still comfortably fit four adults in this car. If you are fitting five adults, the three in the back will probably have to rub shoulders with each other. But otherwise, it's pretty good. I really like these sport seats, which don't have adjustable headrests, but they have this sort of Cupra logo embossed in. It does look really quite cool. And aside from that, it seems like somewhere that I can spend a long time in. You get this sort of um, light bar that runs from the door all the way across the front and to the passenger door as well. That's ambient lighting and that serves more than just that purpose. It serves the purpose of lane keep assist. So lane, lane warning, it warns you when you're moving from one lane to another. And of course, if you are going to hit another vehicle or something in the front, it flashes up to warn you and of course this car does also have um, automated braking as well so it saves you from you know it's got good safety i just couldn't wait to drive it so here we go inside the cupra formentor it is a little bit interesting because this car is an suv crossover style vehicle so you'd imagine the ride height to be pretty high but as i'm sitting here now i've actually got the seat on quite a high setting and i still feel quite low you're certainly not going to be eye to eye level with other suv drivers and i think part of that is because this car is geared towards more of a sporty feel and i quite like that i'm not the mass i'm not a massive fan of suvs but i see their appeal they're very practical very spacious and of course they've got four-wheel drive if you need it which this car has as well but aside from that i quite like my cars that are low down so crossovers actually suit me quite well and this car feels like it's the best of both worlds so when it comes to driving right now i've got this car in comfort mode and i'm on a nice straight piece of road it is quite bumpy and i can feel some of the bumps but the seats cushion it really well the driving position as well is is pretty much perfect as it is with Volkswagen 
group vehicles you know the steering wheel is right where you want it to be it's not coming in the way of the digital dash the pedals are pretty much straight towards my right leg so that I, you know i'm going to be using my right leg on the pedals of course this is the automatic you can get the cupra for mentor in a manual but that's the very uh, entry level one that you can get this particular model obviously comes with 310 horsepower and four wheel drive and it's the vz3 so it's the highest spec car that cupra have but well for the four mentor sitting on 19 inch alloy wheels it's got heated steering wheel it's got all the creature comforts that you need for long journeys and for everyday driving as well but of course because this car is geared towards a more sporty feel if we put the car into sport mode you can see, you can feel everything tense up a little bit the accelerator pedal is that much more responsive the steering wheel has gone a bit sharper but there's one mode more than that there's a cupra mode so if i put the car into cupra mode now you get this this tone from the engine this weird sort of more aggressive noise as if it's urging you to drive faster now of course that is fake noise to be honest but it does bring that sense of theater along and it does let you know that we're definitely in sport mode and again everything goes even more firmer even more responsive and dare I say it, on a road like this, a little bit uncomfortable. But I'll tell you what, it is fun to drive. And I'm quite confident going into these corners on a day like today because of the four-wheel drive that this car has. Oh, it makes you feel good this car it does make you feel good especially with the noise and how composed it is around the corners as well it does really make you feel good i'm not a massive fan of suvs what are you beeping at me for i'm not a massive fan of suvs or crossover vehicles even but this is this is really selling me on them in fact i know people that want this car that are going to choose this car for their next car and i hope they're watching this video because i think i think you should and so it is a very desirable car and it really does go toe to toe with some of the other cars in it really does go toe to toe with some of the other cars in this sort of market But yeah, this car is really fun. The interior is nice to sit in. The seats are very comfortable. And of course, I've shown you around the interior. But now I'll show you around the exterior of the vehicle. Right, so now we're going to take a look around the exterior of the Cupra Formento. But now is a great time to mention that if you are enjoying this video, make sure to click like and let the YouTube algorithm know that this is a good video. And of course, leave a comment, ask me what questions you have about the Cupra for Mentor. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel so I can bring you more content like this. So let's take a look around the vehicle. Starting from the front, you get this Cupra badge, which sticks out like a sore thumb, but it actually looks really good. It gives the whole car, it sort of puts, brings it all together and gives it that sort of mean look and it sits on this grill as well that incorporates all these triangular features now this is cupra's design language of course the triangle like i mentioned in my cupra born video the triangle is the strongest structure in mechanics so cupra have gone with that theme and it's got a load of sharp corners so it does look really aggressive and of course that theme continues on to the headlights as well so you've got this sort of triangular features in the headlights now if we move as we move over to the side of the vehicle you can see these 19 inch alloy wheels that have the bronze finish again in keeping with cupra's design language in keeping with with cupra's branding but as we move further towards the back of the vehicle you start to see it does get the bodywork does get a little bit sharper i mean this rear haunch looks really cool and of course you can see that the 
the roof line actually does slope so it's not like the Ateca which you know is basically an SUV this is more of a crossover vehicle so it does have less headroom in the back but it looks pretty cool it's a coupe SUV and as we move further towards the back of the vehicle again you get that bronze Cupra badging you get it says Cupra as well but the feature of the back of the vehicle that I really quite like is this floating light bar now this is something which we've seen in many Volkswagen Group vehicles including Bentleys and Porsches and Volkswagens and Audis but I really quite like this and it looks really cool especially when you're following another Volkswagen vehicle especially when you're following a Cupra for Mentor it, it, do, it really does look cool towards the bottom then you've got quad exhaust and you've got the sort of rear diffuser which I'm, I'm not sure if it has a purpose but it looks pretty cool it, it makes the whole car feel a lot more aggressive and it makes the whole car feel a lot more sporty as well as we take a look into the boot which you open from there we'll take some stuff out of the boot that we have in there the boot is the official spec sheet does say 420 litres, although I have heard somewhere 450 litres, but we'll go with 420 litres. It, it is a decent sized boot. The one thing that you don't get actually, when you lift the, the, the floor, you don't get a spare wheel in this car, which you do in some of the other Cupra vehicles. But aside from that, it is pretty good. You can, you can drop the seats, the rear seats, 60-40 split, and you've got tie down points. And of course, the boot can close automatically as well, which isn't the case in some other Cupra vehicles too. So overall, it looks pretty good. It feels like it's very practical. And I think, especially if you've got families, it seems like an all-round vehicle. The Formentor is most certainly the most popular Cupra vehicle. It embodies that lifestyle-friendly feel that you get from the reinvented fresh brand. Despite driving the highest spec and most powerful version of the car, I am certain that all versions of the Formentor offer great value and practicality. I would be interested in seeing how the hybrid feels to drive. Overall, I think the Formentor is one of the most beautiful road cars today. An instant sensation.